one group is going to give it a try, despite the possibility it could simply help to reelect Donald Trump. And No Labels is that group. It is a, not a political group that promotes centrism and bipartisanship. It has plans for what it calls an independent unity ticket in 2024. No Labels plans to back a third party candidate in the presidential race and is currently trying to gain ballot access in all 50 states. The group thinks its third-party ticket would attract a sizable share of independent voters who are looking for a candidate in the political middle. And they just might. But would it be enough for a win, or would it likely backfire? No Label's own polling shows a moderate third-party candidate would pull support from Biden while boosting Trump. Joining me now is former Republican Congressman Joe Walsh of Illinois, who ran against Trump for the Republican nomination in 2020. Also with me is former Republican Congressman Charlie Dent of Pennsylvania, two guys I admire and have worked with in the past. Welcome to you both. Charlie, right off the bat, how much of a threat or a promise do you think a third party candidate would be in this upcoming election? Well, I think an independent movement or an independent candidate would have real challenges. That said, I think No Labels is doing the country a service. Uh, by keeping this option open in the event we have another Trump-Biden race. And I, I believe that because most voters uh, on the Democratic side would prefer someone other than Joe Biden. And a hell of a lot of Republicans like myself and Joe, and I think you, Michael, would prefer someone other than Donald Trump. And I think the marketplace of ideas demands that there be an alternative. Now, if, if the Republicans nominate someone other than Donald Trump, say like Tim Scott, then this whole no-labels movement goes away. Uh, but independents, you're right, don't have a great track record. But so many people are disaffiliating from the major political parties that there may be an opportunity for an independent to actually make a difference in this race. I'm not saying they can win, but I think we're in a different time right now. We saw what happened in France with Macron. He came up the middle uh, and, and defied the conventional wisdom. It worked there. I'm not saying it'll work here. But let's, let's at least have that option on the table. Joe, what, what do you make of, of Charlie's argument uh, and the case for no labels? Um, there's been a lot of suspicion uh, about the money and, and, and sort of the politics, and that's kind of inside Washington stuff. But you're a guy with your finger, your finger on the pulse across the country. How does this set up, uh, do you think, uh, in light of what you see out there? Hey, Michael, this isn't complicated at all. I agree with my friend Charlie Dent in this regard. This is a different time. Come on now. Donald Trump tried to end our democracy. Donald Trump and Trumpism right now is the greatest single threat to our democracy. They must be defeated. Anything, Michael, that takes away from defeating Trump and Trumpism in 2024 is, is, is wrong. No labels is wrong. A third party is wrong. A fourth party is wrong. Anybody else running. Trump needs to be defeated. The only way that gets done in 2024 is if all of us, again, line up behind Joe Biden or whoever the Democratic nominee is. I have zero patience, Michael, for all of these ego-driven, money-driven people like no labels who want to put their faces and their candidates out here. They do not understand the unique threat our democracy is under right now. Charlie, how, how, do, how do you respond to that, that argument? Because you, we do hear that quite a bit, um, that idea of it being a unique threat uh, that Donald Trump presents. So why would we do anything or, or position uh, this election in a way that could create a pathway or lane for Donald Trump to, to actually win? Well, I agree with Joe to the extent that, look, nobody, I don't want Donald Trump to be our president again. I voted for Joe Biden in 2020, in 2020 but I also want to say this, that Joe Biden ran as a transitional candidate. He was going to be the, tr the transitional candidate to the next generation of Democratic leadership. That's what I interpreted. Uh, and I, I think he has veered a bit too far to the left, in my opinion. I think we need somebody more centered. And if if neither party, you know, can come up with a more centered platform, I, I think, you know, this gives no labels a reason to exist. And I do think that Republicans, this is a clarion call of Republicans to nominate someone other than Donald Trump. If Donald Trump is not nominated, this whole no labels movement goes away. And uh, I, I'll tell you, but if you have a Trump-Biden ticket, there's going to be a demand for an alternative. 
And that's the marketplace. I get it that we don't want Donald Trump. We agree on that. If it's a race between Biden and Trump, I'll vote for Biden again. Uh, but I don't like to be told that I just have to accept what I'm being fed. A lot of Americans don't like that. Joe, I say you can't shake it. No, and I, you know, and I say this all the time because I love Charlie Dent. I love <laughs> serving with him. But no, look, we don't get to pick when the good Lord places us on this earth. And right now, we are here right now, and we have this unique threat named Donald Trump. So we all kind of have to put our policy differences aside. I don't love Joe Biden, right? He's a little too old for me and all the rest. None of that matters. This isn't about Biden. This is singularly about stopping Donald Trump, the threat to our democracy. And the only way to do that is one-on-one. -on -one. Support the Democratic nominee. That's it. Charlie, well, for, the, for, go ahead. Go ahead, Charlie. I, I, I have just, something I want to play for you, but go ahead. I said, but neither party should be afraid of competition. That's what this is about. They're, they're afraid that somebody else will emerge. Now, I don't know how this plays out. In, in, in 1992, uh, many people on the George W. Bush, uh, George H. W. Bush campaign said that Ross Perot hurt George H. W. Bush. Well, actually, he hurt both candidates in many respects. So I think we have to be a little careful about how we assume an independent movement might affect the 2024 election. We simply don't know that right now. So, so Charlie you, you, and, and Joe, we had former Speaker of the House uh, Paul Ryan joining uh, in CMAC's Squawk Box earlier this week, and he discussed putting forth a Republican candidate that's not Trump. So take a listen to this. Do you think you win if you nominate somebody not named Trump? I do. Because you make everybody who was supporting Trump very mad. Yeah, so, like, I'm a never-again Trumper, so obviously that the 33 percent Trump base doesn't like a person like me because I'm very clear I don't think he's fit and I don't think he can win. But I believe strongly if we nominate a Republican not named Donald Trump, we win this White House. I, I really believe that. And so all we got to do is do that. And I think voters are going to realize his baggage is so big. We're not going to win with him. And there are all these other Republicans that, they, that they're fine with that could win. So, Charlie, does that, is that part of making your case there? Yes, it, it is, actually. Now, I think that uh, some, some Republican other than Donald Trump has a much better chance of defeating Joe Biden, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't bank on it either, because I don't think you have to also beat Trumpism. Uh, and I just think running as a mini-Trump is not necessarily going to uh, be the ticket for the Republican Party. Also, I do think the abortion issue is also one that is a major liability for the Republican Party. It's going to have to moderate on that issue. So I think Paul's right. Uh, a non-Trump Republican would have a much better chance of winning, but by no means that's a guarantee. Joe, but here, here's the problem that, as I see it, Joe, and I, I hear the oh, if we nominate somebody other than Trump, if there is no if. indication, Donald Trump is sitting at 52, 53 percent approval, uh, you know, desire among Republicans. The close, the next closest Republican challenger is at 21 percent. So, so. Joe, as someone who's been out there, as I mentioned before, um, you know this party inside and out. You've been a part of it. You're now out of it. What have you learned about the people who are still there, who are still pushing the Trump narrative, but also those folks who are saying, if we only nominate someone else? They're, they're, Paul Ryan, Michael, is living in la-la land. He's utterly out of touch with where the average Republican voter is right now. The average Republican voter is with Trump. This if not Trump, if, if somebody else can be the nominee. Donald Trump is running away with this. Every time he's been indicted, his support only grows. He'll be indicted another one or two times. Look, the nomination is his. He's going to be the nominee. And Michael, if not Trump, it's going to be the Trumpiest SOB out there. Not a yeah. guy like Paul Ryan, not a guy like Tim Scott. It's going to be a jerk and a bully and an authoritarian because that's what the base wants. And, and I know it sucks because I want my party back, but, but we don't live in that time right now. This is the party of Trumpism. They're a threat to democracy. They need to be defeated. The only way you defeat them is through the Democratic Party right now. Hey, hey, Charlie, to that point, how, how, do, how do we get to a point where the party nominates someone other than Trump when the base wants someone who will be their retribution? 
who will be the person who is going to be on the, in the street fighting, throwing, throwing, you know, punches to the below the belt uh, kind of politician. Uh, does the sort of kumbaya, morning in America, you know, uh, kind of narrative that we're hearing from some of these candidates sell to a base that wants somebody who's going to go out and break things and beat up people? Uh, not at the moment. However, I, I would say this. There are many Republicans—I'm not saying a majority right now, but there are a lot of Republicans who want someone other than Donald Trump. When we say all Republicans want Trump, that's not true. Yeah, he may be about 50 percent right now, but there are a lot who do not want him. My own view is that if the Republican Party wants to reform itself, it will have to become much more socially tolerant. It'll have to re embrace free markets and modern reasonable regulation, engage uh, on, on uh, national security in a much more uh, serious way than it has, say, under Donald Trump. There are things it is going to have to do uh, to, be, to attract that center-right to center-left voter that is not winning right now. There are too many Republicans defecting, like me and like Joe and others, and the, the Trump path will not work. Now, right now, he's in, yep. in, in, in command. But, hey, if, 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 he wins, if he wins a nomination in 2024, Republicans lose the presidency again, you know, at some point, you know, people are going to get tired of, you know, making losing great again, uh, and Republicans are going to want to actually win. And you cannot win. Party's jobs is to, are, are to win elections, not to lose them. We've had nothing but defeat since Trump was elected right. in 2016. My man, Charlie Dent, Joe Walsh, you guys made this uh, interesting, exciting, and fun. I appreciated the conversation very, very much.